story recapped here. Today, I'm going to show a drama, fantasy, and mystery film called, Homunculus. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In present Tokyo, 34-year-old amnesiac Susumu no Koshi is a homeless man living in his car. He used to work for a successful foreign financial company, but is now getting by through whatever's left in his credit card. He goes about his day in his car when a young fellow taps on his window. It's a medical intern named Manabu Ito. Ito offers him an opportunity to earn money through a human medical experiment, but Nokoshi flatly declines. The next morning, Nokoshi's car is towed away taking all his belongings with it. Ito appears and persuades him to join the experiment again. Seeing no choice, he agrees. Later that night, Ito takes Nokoshi to his medical room. They will be doing a trepanation experiment, where Ito will drill a hole into Nokoshi's skull. Ito believes that people only use 10% of the brain and so he wants to know if this improvement will help activate the other 90%. As Nokoshi lays on the steel table, he feels unsure, but proceeds with the experiment anyway, seeing that he has nothing to lose. The next morning, Nokoshi wakes up in his car as if nothing has happened, but he feels the wound on his forehead. He goes to dinner with Ito, where he barrages him with questions and evaluations. He bids Ito goodbye and he reminds him that they still have six more days of observation. Nokoshi makes his way back, thinking about his weird situation. As he's walking, a gust of wind blows into his right eye and he covers it, rubbing away the dust. When he looks up with only his left eye, he's shocked to see the people transform around him into different shapes, sizes, and creatures. He frantically wanders around the street with one eye covered, terrified at the horror he's witnessing. Suddenly, he bumps into a large robot homunculus that turns out to be a Yakuza boss. The henchmen pin him to a wall as the boss brandishes his knife. Just as the boss threatens to cut off his pinky, Nokoshi has a vision. He pleads with the boss to stop what he's doing before he cuts his own finger. The boss stops and starts trembling and crying. The henchmen are confused and let Nokoshi go and they scutter away. Nokoshi goes immediately to Ito and tells him about what happened and the human monster hybrids that he saw. Ito is excited and concludes this sixth sense as a side effect of the trepanation. He asks Nokoshi if he can see him as a monster, but he only says that he sees nothing because Ito is invisible. On the third day, Nokoshi manages to get his car back and meets up again with Ito. Ito calls the monsters homunculus, and concludes that the homunculus is how people see themselves. It's a horrific version of them created by deep stress and trauma. They conduct more research by going to a brothel, where, according to Ito, a lot of people have deep issues and trauma. Nokoshi sees only one homunculus, a girl with the number tag, 1775, and calls her a San monster. They follow her to a cafe and Ito quickly feels a strong attraction towards her and decides to approach her. Nokoshi watches the encounter with one eye and sees the sand being sucked by Ito's invisible body. The girl leaves and Nokoshi confronts a dejected Ito. He sees that Ito has red dots all over his body and he quickly leaves, but not before handing Nokoshi a cell phone that he managed to swipe from the girl. Nokoshi spends the night in his car going through the girl's phone. He learns about her strict parents and the alternate social media account that she keeps where she posts about her sexual fantasies and pictures of self-harm. Suddenly, some men appear around his car. The henchmen take him to their boss, who asks Nokoshi about what he did to him. The boss doesn't like to feel vulnerable so he drags Nokoshi up by the collar, threatening him with a knife. Nokoshi then has a vision of his trauma. It turns out that the boss accidentally cut off his friend's pinky finger with a sickle while they were arguing over a toy. He ran away and didn't apologize to his friend, and this memory haunted him for the rest of his life. The boss breaks down as he recalls the memory and his robot homunculus starts breaking apart, revealing a fragile little boy inside. The robot returns to its miniature size and the boss, as his child self, bows down to the floor, crying and apologizing to his friend. He thanks Nokoshi, quits the Yakuza and breaks off his own pinky. Later that night, the phone starts ringing. He meets up with the girl at his car. She asks for her phone and begins taunting him. He looks at her with one eye and sees the sand monster, but as he looks closely, it isn't sand at all, but rather millions of text symbols. He soon learns that the girl is traumatized by her strict parents and uses sex to rebel, taunting virgins like Ito into giving in. But Nokoshi is no virgin and he pins the sand monster on the seat of the car and penetrates her. The sand-like material starts disappearing, revealing the cuts that the girl made on her body. Nokoshi tries to suck the blood out but she stops him, sucking back the blood from his mouth frantically. The sand completely disappears and the girl returns to her normal, non-monster state. The next morning, Nokoshi is shocked to see that he has absorbed the other's traumas. His hand has now turned robotic and his leg is composed of sand. 
He runs to the hospital where Ito in turns and is asked to wait in line. He then sees a faceless woman. He falls back, shocked at her face, but at the same time, he can't help but feel like he's seen her before. Ito arrives and takes him to his examination room. He tells Nokoshi about a woman who absorbed the homunculi too and then killed herself. Nokoshi doesn't want to die seeing these monsters so he threatens Ito to close the hole in his forehead. Ito agrees on one condition, that he tells him what his homunculus is. Nokoshi leaves and the memory of the woman lingers in his mind. He rummages through his car and finds a business card signed by one named, Nanako. The memory comes rushing back to him and he remembers her from an encounter at a bar. He remembers loving her, moving in together, and just being with her. With his newfound memory, Nokoshi traces Nanako back at the hospital. He approaches her and it turns out that she has amnesia too and doesn't remember him. To help her remember, he takes her to their old apartment. Together they reminisce through their old stuff as Nokoshi fills in the empty spaces in her memory. Nanako breaks down for a moment, but Nokoshi reassures her with a kiss. Later that night, the two make love, signaling their reunion. Unbeknownst to Nokoshi, Ito has been calling him all day. On the sixth day, Nokoshi wakes up with Nanako in his arms and his own homunculus gone. As he hugs her, he notices the same wound on her forehead, revealing that she had also undergone the trepanation experiment by Ito. He drives back to Ito's room but finds him gone. He ransacks his office, looking for clues, and notices a framed family picture. His phone rings and it's Ito. Nokoshi confronts him and learns that Ito knew about him and Nanako all along. Ito also tells him that all the homunculus he's been seeing were illusions of his own world. Before their call ends, Ito tells Nokoshi that the real Nanako will remember the real world soon and that sometimes, some memories are better left unremembered. Determined to save the love of his life, Nokoshi searches for the drill in Ito's office. Meanwhile, Ito arrives at their apartment, but this time, a different woman wearing Nanako's clothes opens the door. He smiles at her and calls her by her real name, Chichiro. Back at the office, Nokoshi drills the hole back into his forehead. As he looks at himself in the mirror, his ability has returned, and once again he sees his robotic arm and sandy leg. Nokoshi returns to their apartment and is shocked to see an unknown woman wearing Nanako's clothes. As he looks closely at her with one eye, the woman's face alternates between the stranger and the woman he loves. He begs her to tell her who she is and she admits to killing the real Nanako. As he touches her, he's sucked into another vision. Chichiro is driving with her boyfriend at night and after an argument, she tries to get out of the car. He stops her and in turn doesn't see Nanako running into the road. Chichiro is thrown out of the car as her boyfriend hits Nanako and Nokoshi. Chichiro watches in horror as her boyfriend dies instantly and sees the dead body of Nanako. In turn, Nokoshi remembers his own memories of that night. They had an argument and he soon learns that she had a miscarriage. She runs outside and he pursues her, but it's too late. They run straight into Chichiro and her boyfriend's car. Chichiro apologizes and tells him her real name before she collapses. After tucking her in bed, Nokoshi faces Ito in the living room, giving him patronizing remarks. At this point, Nokoshi feels defeated, now with Nanako dead, he literally has nothing to live for. As Ito continues to taunt him, Nokoshi finally reveals that his homunculus is water. At first, it seems like Ito's invisible, but when gets nervous, bubbles rise up from inside him. Ito is shocked and faces him, denying his accusations. As Nokoshi looks at him, Ito's water figure resembles his father and a goldfish appears. He grabs Ito by the arm and sees the visions of his real trauma. As a kid, Ito's father kept a pet goldfish and paid more attention to it than his own son. Ito is starved with love and even colors his skin to resemble scales. One day, fed up with his father's inattention, Ito deliberately breaks the fishbowl, leaving the fish to die. Meanwhile, the grown-up Ito trembles and falls to his knees, begging Nokoshi to help him, since he's the only one who can actually see the real him, and that he can finally prove to his father that he's worth paying attention to. Nokoshi tells him that it's no use, the homunculus is gone, and that they should just look at the other person, and create their own world. Ito breaks down crying and despite everything he's done, Nokoshi hugs him and comforts him, understanding the pain of not being seen. On the seventh day, Ito drills hole into his own forehead and stitches other eyes shut as he looks at the sunrise. Nokoshi gets together with Chichiro and even though he sometimes still sees Nanako, the homunculus is now gone. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.